In 1861, China was threatened by a foreign invasion, but the people did not bow their heads and practice wushu techniques. And so a new warrior emerged. A guy in a black suit is caught in the caves and just as they are about to kill him, soldiers in black intervene. A big fight ensues, in which the soldiers in black fight without an ounce of fear. Among them is General Su, known for his bravery and skill. For freeing the prince from the fortress, he promises to make him governor. Su wants to give this rank to Yuan, his wife's brother, but the prince disagrees and says he will send Yuan away if Su does not accept the rank of governor. But Su is not interested in that, he would like to become a wushu master and teach everyone this martial technique, he believes that in that case, Yuan will definitely become governor. At dawn Su leaves. Five years have passed, and Yuan wants to visit Su and his family, who live happily together while Su learns the martial arts. He is met by his sister and introduced to his son Feng. He doesn't believe his father's words about being bored, for in fact he has come for a showdown. Yuan discovers that the old man killed his real father because he had mastered a deadly technique and kills the old man for lying. Ying sees all this and tries to run away with Feng, but the guards lead her to Yuan anyway. He intends to keep shedding blood. Su receives the news of his father's death and he immediately rushes to the scene, but there is no one there, only dead people. Daggers start flying into his back, one after another, but he skillfully maneuvers, grabs his sword and fights the girl who throws them. She is an excellent warrior, but Su himself is not timid and fights back. She is joined by a second warrior in a black suit and attacks Su. Their swords hit the outhouse they are fighting near. Yuan, white as Nosferatu, is about to make a tribute to his father, but Su arrives on the scene and scatters all the soldiers. Su intends to avenge his father. The two Wushu masters fight near the river, but Su notices that his sword is not particularly effective. Yuan removes his clothes, under which he reveals the armor sewn into his skin. The fight goes without swords and then Su shows real skill, but Yuan has something in store for the occasion. The five poisonous fist technique, which brings nothing but death. Now he's just like his father. Su loses the battle, but Yuan decides to spare him and dumps him in the river. Ying cannot bear such a loss and jumps after him. They wake up in the river, but Su cannot regain consciousness. His beloved puts him on a stretcher and carries him up the mountain. Her whole body is covered in blood from how long she has been carrying him. At one point he almost falls off the mountain, but Dr. Yu helps them. Su regains consciousness in her house on the mountain. He and Ying have managed to work together, Su's wife makes fine wine, which he distributes for free in town, along with medicine for the poor. He survived the poisonous fists, though this is almost impossible very few people survive such poisons. His right arm is paralyzed due to torn tendons. Su despairs as he cannot even hold a cup of rice in his hands. He suffers and pounces on wine. They stay with the three of them in Yu's house. After a long time, he still doesn't come to his senses and gets drunk. Ying says he keeps waiting and waiting for him to be himself again, but he still won't do it and then it hits him. Su starts practicing day by day, regaining his former strength, but at one point he notices two old men moving through the air using levitation techniques. They lead him to a place that looks like a temple, but it is as if he is dreaming. The old man in the dark says that Su must defeat the god Wushu. But here's the problem, his arm has grown stronger, but his faith is weakened. Su loses the fight to the Wushu god, but soon he is back there again. Now they fight on staffs and fight as equals until the Wushu god knocks Su down. And so the days of Su pass. A constant battle with the Wushu god to finally regain his faith and return home wounded and bruised. Meanwhile, his physical health does improve, unlike his mental health. Who is this Wushu god? Does he really exist? Yu says he's going crazy. Another year passes and Ying decides to check out Su's training, but notices that no one is there, he smashes vases against himself and talks to the gods. She tells her husband about it, but it no longer makes any difference to him, real or not, he must become stronger the way he loves to get his family back, must see his son once more. In gets worse, and she gets drunk on wine, talking to the wind, in her heart wanting to talk to her son, Su joins her. Su's struggles continue, he becomes more powerful and makes great strides. God says that Su has his faith in himself back, which means he is strong enough. Su realizes, however, that these are characters he made up and their training is over. At home there is a letter from Ying saying that she is leaving for her son. Ying does come for her son, but Yuan has no intention of bringing him back. Su, meanwhile, is already breaking into the palace and fighting the guards. He is as strong and agile as ever. Yuan orders Ying to be buried in the woods while Su fights his way through the ranks of the guards. Ying is pushed into a box and buried underground, and the only guards who know her location are killed by Yuan. 
Su finally takes out Yuan's two bodyguards and begins to fight the man he once thought was his brother. He uses his venomous fist technique as usual, but Su is stronger than ever and won't even let him touch his body with his venomous hands. Su pulls Yuan into a well with venomous snakes at the bottom and continues to exchange blows with Yuan, he even manages to tear off pieces of the armor sewn to his body. Su wraps an iron chain around his fist, and this allows him to be on par with Yuan. He rips the armor from his body and knocks him out, perhaps for the last time. His son convinces him not to touch Yuan, as they do not know where Ying is buried. Su runs into the woods and, thanks to the rain, finds a chest containing his wife, but does not have time to dig her up. She is dead and no one else can bring her back. Su plunges into an alcoholic abyss and goes mad. His son nurses him back to health but is unlikely to be of any help. Su witnesses fights between foreigners and Chinese, but does not take part in them. Su goes to an unfamiliar establishment and drinks wine, but it's not in's wine, then some man beckons him over and treats him to some wine. They have a fight, in which we learn about the drunken fist technique. Yes, yes, the same technique we've known since the very old days. Su and his opponent get drunk on wine and fight, but he soon disappears. Ma runs into the building and says he knew Su and fought alongside him, but Su won't come to his senses, so Ma gives him his sword back. Su just asks to take care of his son and chases Feng away. But later something flares up in him with renewed vigor. It is his father's love. Su comes to Ma's fight with Feng and returns the sword he threw at him. Su is not allowed into the place of the fight in rags, so Ma puts his outer garment on him. They go inside and see a Chinese man being killed by a foreign bully. The main fight begins. Ma versus the bully. The Chinese fighter tries to dodge the fighter's blows and land his own punches, but he doesn't have time to do anything, and the bully almost beats the hell out of him by jumping on his ribcage. Ma feels really bad after the big man's punches and then Feng runs into the ring, he bites the fighter and he grabs him by the neck. He calls out for his father and Su cuts through the space with his speed, aiming his fist at the big man's face. The big guy is knocked out and dragged out of the ring and then the two big men interfere, but Su doesn't even let them get near him and beats them up like they're two sacks of rice. They get angry and manage to hit Su, but no such luck, he is so masterful with his drunken fist that he throws one to the tigers and makes a chop out of the other. The foreigners become more numerous, but as soon as one wounded Su with a knife, he became enraged and turned into a spirit of speed and strength. Thanks to his agility he turned all the attackers into dead men, but at the same time he almost died himself, hitting the back of his head on the floor. He sees his wife Ying, who has come to him and asks him to get up. For her sake, for their son. She says she has never left him and has been there for him. Su suddenly comes to his senses and gets up from the ring with his son. He resumes his training, but in drunken fist style. He and his son went around the country promoting the philosophy of martial arts, particularly the drunken fist. 